Hi Gender Blenders, uh, as um, you've noticed probably from the introduction, as I've stated uh, in some other places as well, I'm dyslexic. So uh, I have a very complicated uh, relationship with reading. I didn't learn how to read until 8th uh, grade. Um, my grade level had dropped to the point where I was in danger of uh, being removed from school and so my mother decided to intervene. Uh, I had to read this book and write this report uh, in order to graduate eighth grade um, and uh, I didn't have the skills to do it so uh, well the book was Johnny Tremaine. Um, I still remember it very very vividly uh, but my mother would come in every night that year and she would sit down on my bed and she would uh, start by reading to me. And one night she would read a chapter and then the next night uh, she would uh, have me try and read. First a word and then two words and then three words. And I eventually worked my way up to a sentence, worked my way up to two sentences and on it went. So I um, have always kind of felt like I'm, I'm playing catch-up when it comes to reading. Uh, as a dyslexic, I don't really read the way anyone else does. I pretty much just see words as images, and I've spent most of my life trying to memorize all of those word pictures as possible. So whereas you might read um, the word spirit, S-P-I-R-I-T, by sounding it out or uh, what have you, uh, I just see a, a picture and through memorization I've had to memorize that that particular picture is spirit and that spirit is spelled S-P-I-R-I-T. Um, it's taken a lot of work. I think in part my penmanship is what it is because when I write I'm trying to match pictures it's kind of like uh, tracing an image in your mind. Uh, so you can imagine I'm quite thank thankful for um, a spell check. <laughs> but uh, early on I got involved in reading comic books um, because it was easy to see what was going on and it was easy to see uh, from uh, they were easy sent they were short sentences and it was it was easy to understand um, easy to see the action and see the relationship between the characters. And so that was a good starting place for me. Uh, also the dictionary, as I said, because I have worked so hard to memorize all these word pictures, um, my best friend is a dictionary and I've spent many, many hours just going through it, memorizing every word I can. Uh, it's very tedious, uh, but on the plus side, uh, it does tend to make you loquacious. So, uh, comic books and the dictionary were probably where I started. And then that moved into role-playing games. Um, I'm that kind of a geek where I, you know, pl I've played just about every role-playing game out there. I, I still love them. I still enjoy them. And the benefit there was all the reading required. You know, Dungeons & Dragons had, you know, the Player's Manual and the Dungeon Master's Manual and the Monster Manual and the Magic Manual and the Tomes and the, you know, the handbooks and all of these sorts of things that required a lot of reading. Lots of rules, lots of reading, lots of uh, attempts to try and understand what's being communicated in complex ways. And so that really helped uh, me out in my reading a lot. Uh, and I actually miss doing a lot of that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, so I moved into uh, role-playing games and then uh, I discovered Shakespeare. And, and that pretty much was one of those life-changing events. Uh, 
I, I try to not go a year without getting through the plays. Um, but, uh, yeah, I love uh, Shakespeare. Um, Oxford's plays are amazing, and I had the wonderful opportunity growing up um, to perform uh, several of them, and uh, that's always been something that has also helped my reading and also kind of affected my tastes. Um, so, yeah, after uh, Shakespeare, uh, I then found myself moving into the classics, and uh, those kind of branched me out into all sorts of avenues. Um, so that today I now uh, find myself, you know, reading all sorts of things. Uh, books on culture, books on politics, books on sociology, obviously with an emphasis on gender studies and queer theory and, and queer studies and transgender gendered issues. Um, but, uh, you know, books of that nature, histories, um, biographies, philosophy texts, religious texts, um, science fiction, fantasy, uh, mysteries, although in mysteries I tend to uh, be uh, pretty particular, and I've yet to find anyone quite as good as Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. But, um, yeah, uh, you know, pretty much uh, whatever I can get my hands on, uh, I'm going to read. Uh, even if I don't like it, even if I don't agree with it, even if I'm not into it, I'm going to try and read it. Um, and so invariably I find myself reading three, four, or five books at a time. Uh, and I usually get through about two or three of them a week. Um, it's not uncommon to see me walking around with a, uh, a bag full of books. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, um, I love reading and I do a lot of it. And I would say the only difference between uh, when I was in eighth grade and now is probably the breadth of reading. Um, and the breadth of my memorization. I have so many more words memorized and uh, I read so much more and so much more broadly now. But uh, I love reading. I absolutely love reading and it's something that um, is so critical. Uh, it's, so, it's so critical to everything we do in life. Imagine, if you will, trying to go through life and, and uh, you know, not being able to read. Uh, it, it can be quite the challenge. So. I'm very thankful for uh, the literacy that I've worked real hard to get, and um, I, I love reading, and, and uh, I don't see myself quitting anytime uh, soon, so broadly and deeply, and uh, I'll never get my fill. Anyway, I guess uh, that about covers it uh, from my end. Uh, I hope everybody has had a great week. I hope everybody's looking forward to the upcoming holidays. and. Uh, We'll see you around.